This is part one for lesson 8.3, Angles of Rotation. First, a couple of definitions. So first off, angle of elevation. So the word elevate means to lift. And so when we're looking, so just say you're standing right here, to have an angle of elevation, you'd be looking up. And so the angle of elevation is from your eye level up. So this angle, that would be your angle of elevation. So we would say that it's the angle between the horizontal line and your line of sight. So when you're looking up, your line of sight is elevated to a point above. Okay, so if you just remember that elevation means up then that will help you remember that. So an angle of depression, you can imagine, is if you were standing there, your line of, or your horizontal line, the angle of depression would be your line of sight looking down. So what would that be? And so that's gonna be your angle between your horizontal line and your line of sight. To a point below. Okay, so to illustrate this idea of angle of elevation, angle of depression, and a way that we can use this, if we look at a problem, an ornithologist, which is a zoologist that studies birds, is taking pictures of puffins, and I've got a picture there of a puffin, on the edge of a cliff. So let's, first of all, let's draw a picture of what that would look like. So I'm going to have a cliff, Okay, and here's our little birds, our little puffins. That's not very good, but anyway, you get the idea. And the ornithologist is going to be like out here viewing from a boat. Okay, so we've got ornithologist, you know, with binoculars or whatever. So the horizontal line would be right here. And in order to see the puffins, she's going to have to look up. Okay, so this is going to be our angle of elevation. So it says she measures a 28 degree angle of elevation. So this is 28 degrees. If her position is 15 feet above the water, so from here to the water is 15 feet, 40 feet from the cliff, so this is 40 feet, how high above the water are the puffins? So this is what I'm looking for. So there's a couple of parts to this. First, I'm gonna to need to find out what this is, and then I'll need to add my 15 feet because that was above the water. So really, I'm looking at this triangle where I don't know that one, but this is 40 and this is 28 degrees. And so we know enough about trig to be able to solve for that um, side. So because I'm doing this angle and I'm looking for the side opposite and I have the side adjacent, I'm going to use tangent. Just a little heads up, for most real life situations, you're going to be using tangent because those measurements are easier to measure in real life than it would be to measure that hypotenuse length. So the tangent of 28 degrees is gonna be x over 40, and you can solve that, so make sure you're in degree mode. Now on a test, on a quiz, I'm not gonna be able to say that over and over to you, but you better remember to do that because if you're in radian mode, you're gonna get a very different answer. So what you're gonna do when you multiply both sides by 40, you're gonna have 40 times tangent of 28, and so x is gonna equal 21.26837, so some other stuff. So it says, um, so that, that's how high this is, so 21.268, and then if I add 15 feet to that, that's gonna make it about 36.26, so about 36.3, feet above the water. And that's how far up the puffins are. So if they fell into the water, that's how far they'd go. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is what's called an angle of rotation. So we already know what angles are and you know what it means to rotate something. So if you have a ray and it starts rotating, now in geometry, when we talk about rotating, we're going to be going counterclockwise. And that's just the standard. And so um, unless it tells you that it's going clockwise, you're gonna be going counterclockwise. So if this ray rotates, it's going to be 
like there, or maybe it will rotate there, or maybe it will rotate all the way around. So that's what the angle of rotation is. So the angle is actually how many degrees does it rotate. So we're going to start off with this. This is what we call standard position. Okay, that's our standard or our starting position. And the angle of rotation is going to be how many degrees does it rotate to our final position, our terminal side. So another thing that we do is we call this our initial side. Initial means to begin, remember like an initial point on a graph. So this is our initial side. And then when this starts rotating, it's going to go counterclockwise. Where it ends up, that will be our terminal side. Okay, terminal means when something ends. So if somebody has a terminal disease or a train terminal, that's where something is ending. So our terminal side. So this angle that's right here, this is going to be our angle of rotation. Okay, so if we say at positive angles, that's gonna be where we rotate normally, counterclockwise. If we tell you like something's rotating negative degrees, then that's going to be rotating clockwise. So in that example, if I had an initial side here and it started rotating clockwise, then this angle of rotation would be like negative 80 degrees or something like that. Okay, so whereas this one would be like positive, I don't know, 120 degrees or so. If you think about a protractor, um, when you have that, you have zero degrees, and then this, of course, is 90 degrees, and this is 180 degrees. And so when you start going, you have you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I didn't space that very well. But that's how that goes. And so that's the same idea with your angles of rotation. The thing that we talk about a lot when we're doing this is we talk about what's called the reference angle. And so the way that we're going to um, abbreviate that is you're going to have this Greek letter called theta. And that's a really common Greek letter that we use in geometry when we're talking about angles. So theta is a very common um, variable. And then we're going to do reference as a subscript, meaning it's the angle of reference. So when we're talking about a reference angle, there's a couple of things that are always true. Okay, it's always going to be a positive angle. So meaning we're going to be going counterclockwise with that. Our reference angle will always be acute. So you cannot have a reference angle more than 90 degrees. Your terminal side of a reference angle will be the side, your, sorry, the reference angle will be the terminal side will be the, the terminal side, but it's the angle that it makes with the x-axis. So I didn't say that very well. So it's the terminal side of the angle with the x-axis, and that's what the reference angle is. So as some examples, um, if we look at let me erase what I have right here. If I was to look at this picture that I have right here, and if this is my angle of rotation, that if I say that that's 120 degrees, that's actually not my reference angle because this terminal side, my blue side, is not, it's not the acute angle that it makes with the x-axis. So in order to get my reference angle, what I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to be looking at the acute angle that it makes with the x-axis. So if this part is 120, this would be 60. And so I would say that my reference angle on this one would be 60 degrees. If I looked at this example on the right, remember it always has to be positive, And this is 80 degrees. And the angle that it makes with the x-axis would be 80 degrees. And so my reference angle would be 80 degrees. So we use the reference angles for a lot of things. And so it's really important that you can name a reference angle. So we're going to practice that. So we're going to sketch each angle. So I'm not asking you to get a protractor. I don't want you to do that. But I want you to know about where 94 degrees is. So we're going to start always right there. This is 0 degrees. And we're going to go 94 degrees. So if I went to the y-axis, that's 90 degrees. So we're going to go just a little bit past that. So that hopefully should be straighter. Um, but anyway, that's going to be our 94 degrees. So it says find the reference angle. 94 degrees cannot be the reference angle because it's not acute. So to find the reference angle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this side. What angle does that make with the x-axis? So right there, what angle is that? So basically, you just, you're just going to do 180 minus 94. 
And so you're going to get 86. It's positive, it's acute, and it makes that um, angle with the x-axis. So pause the video and do number three. So starting at zero degrees, you're going to go 245 degrees and then find the reference angle. Okay, I drew a re an angle of 245 degrees, so starting at zero, it's going to go past 180, but not all the way to 270. I'm not looking for an exact ray, like it's just approximate. So basically, if you're in the right, right quadrant towards whichever axis it should be closer to, like you don't want that closer to the x-axis because that wouldn't be right, but as long as you've got the right idea. Okay, now as far as my reference angle goes, it's not going to be that because that would be obtuse it's going to be this angle right here. So what angle does that make with my x-axis? So I've got from here to here. This was 180 degrees, so I need to find from 180, how many degrees did it go to get to 245? So I'm going to say 245 minus 180. And so I get that 65 degrees is going to be my reference angle. Okay, so we've got a couple more examples like this, so go ahead and pause the video, do four and five, and then just check back and make sure you got the right thing. If you don't, then you'll need to ask some questions. Okay, here's your answers for four and five. I want you to notice that when I drew my angle, um, the negative 110, we're going to draw this arrow showing the direction because otherwise, if I don't show that, then I'm wondering if it was negative 110 degrees or if I just don't know how to do 110 degrees. So make sure you show that. And so like on the one on the right, on number five, how I drew the green arrow showing the direction, that shows that this was a negative angle to begin with. Okay, and then with a different color, I've shown the angle of reference. Okay, the reference angle. So that's where I'm showing that. So you'll notice that both of these have the same reference angle. They both have a 70 degree reference angle, even though the angles themselves are not the same. They don't even end up in the same quadrant of your xy coordinate plane. So I want you to make sure you understand the difference between those, but the reference angle is a very, very important thing that you need to be able to find. Next question, how many angles between 0 and 360 have the same reference angle? So let's just think about this for a second. If I have between 0 and 360, so if this is 0, this is 90, this is 180, 270, and then we're back to 360. So if I have the same reference angle, if I just take this angle right here and this has a reference angle, what other angles would have the exact same reference angle? So the exact same di distance between that angle terminal side and the x-axis. So think about that. Draw yourself a little sketch on your notes. You should have come up with three additional ones, so four angles all together they're all going to have the same reference angle. So this would be the same reference angle, this would be the same reference angle, and this one as well. So if, for example, I was saying 30 degrees, then this would also have a reference angle of 30 degrees, but the angle itself, starting at zero, would have been 180 minus 30, so that would be 150 degrees. So 100, so zero, sorry, 30 degrees has a reference angle of 30 degrees. 150 degrees has a reference angle of 30 degrees. What's the next one? What would that angle be? You're looking at 30, 30 degrees beyond 180. So that would be 210 degrees. That also has a reference angle of 30 degrees. And then for the last one, you're looking at 30 degrees less than 360. So 330 degrees also has the same reference angle. So understanding that no matter where you're located, your reference angle is acute it's positive, it's the distance between your terminal side and the x-axis. Those are all super important skills to be able to have. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to let P, which is going to be a point, an ordered pair, negative 2, negative 3, so let's go and graph that. So negative 2, negative 3. P is going to be the terminal, a point on the terminal side of theta, which is an angle in standard position. So let's think about what that means. I'm going to have an angle in standard position, meaning it started right here, and we're going to go around until we get to the side that contains P. So that's what I'm talking about. This is my angle. Okay, so this is theta. Not the reference angle, that's just theta. Now the reference angle is something different. It says find the exact value. Now when we say exact value, that means no decimals. You're going to usually have irrational numbers, so like square root 3 or square root 2 or something like that, of the six trig functions of theta. 
So how do we do that? So we need to stop and think about what we know. So I do know that this, this point is negative 2, negative 3. So if I was to draw a triangle, this would be 2 and this would be 3. If I just take that off of the coordinate plane and I said, can you find the hypotenuse, you would be able to do that. If I said, find, um, if, if we call this theta, and I said, find you know, the tangent of that or the sine of that, you could do that. That's exactly what we did in the last lesson. So what we do in a situation like this is number one, the angle we're interested in is our reference angle. So that's this blue angle that I'm marking right there. That is my reference angle. Let me just draw this bigger. This is gonna be my reference angle and that's the one I care about. This is gonna be a right angle because it's perpendicular to the x-axis. This is a length, now negative two just shows which quadrant it's in and negative three shows which quadrant it's in but the sides of the triangle are positive two and positive three. So one thing I can do first of all is I can use a Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So two squared plus three squared equals, we'll just call it p squared. So I'm gonna have four plus nine equals p squared. So this is square root 13. Now using that, I'm going to find the cosine of theta. And when I say theta, I'm talking about this reference angle. So the cosine of that angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's two over square root 13. One thing I'm not going to require is that you simplify your radical. So you don't need to multiply by square root of 13 over square root 13. You can just leave it as two square root 13. Now remember that the secant is the inverse of that. So you just have to do the reciprocal and there's your secant. Okay, the sine of theta. So here's theta, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosecant is the inverse of that, so square root of 13 over 3. And then the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that one's going to be 3 over 2, and the inverse of that would be 2 over 3. So those are the six trig ratios if your point is negative 2, negative 3. Now if your point is something else, which we're going to see in just a second, then that gives us a whole different situation. So let's do another one before we finish this video. We're going to let P be 1, 3. So 1, 3 tells us what quadrant. We're going to go positive 1, negative 3. So positive 1, negative 3. There's where P is. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line like that. And the angle that we did, because that's the terminal, it was like this. But I don't really care about that angle. That doesn't matter really. What really matters is this is my reference angle. That's the theta I'm talking about. So what I do is I complete my triangle, and so I'll just draw another one right out here. This is what I'm talking about. This is one, this is three. And so use your Pythagorean theorem to find this one. I'll call that P. This is my reference angle, so that's theta. And then you can find all of the different values. So using my Pythagorean theorem, one squared plus three squared, that's one plus nine, so 10. So this is square root 10. So basing theta being that angle right there, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over square root of 10. And then secant is the inverse of that. Remember that the cos do not go together, and so it's not cosine cosecant, it's cosine secant. Now, of course, you can simplify that to square root of 10, and I would expect that you would do that. Okay, the next one is sine. So sine is opposite. So because theta is our angle, opposite is 3. So 3 over square root 10. And then cosecant would be square root 10 over 3. Okay, tangent, again, based on theta being our angle, is opposite over adjacent, so 3 over 1. I do expect that you will simplify that to 3. Cotangent then would be 1 over 3. Okay, that's the end of the first part of this lesson. You're now going to go on to the second part of the lesson.